database from the future. Our time traveling friend Daniels left in his quarters. I'm not certain Daniels would approve of this. We'll keep it to ourselves. I told him that I could not only beam a grapefruit from one planet to the adjacent planet in the same system, which is easy, by the way, I could do it with a life form. So, I tested it on Admiral Archer's prize beagle. I know that dog. What happened to it? I'll tell you when it reappears. <clears throat> I don't know. I do feel guilty about that. I thought you and your colleagues were supposed to be keeping an eye on the timeline. The events that are taking place are the result of temporal incursions. They are not supposed to be happening. I dare you to do better. Enlist in Starfleet. It is... It is... Wrong! It is wrong! I hate it! A gateway to other times and dimensions. Behold. Gateway to your own past, if you wish. A noise bar? Captain's log, no star date. For us, time does not exist. All Earth history has been changed. Your beginning, all that you knew, is gone. You mean we're stranded down here? With no past, no future. I couldn't believe it when the bartender told me who you are. Why are you talking to me, man? Your father was captain of a starship for 12 minutes. He saved 800 lives. Including yours. I dare you to do better. I've seen enough. Don't bother me with it. Captain's log, Stardate 465-78.4. The Enterprise has arrived at Station Deep Space Nine to destroy the Jordan Aqueduct systems. Ops. James T. Kirk was a great man. That was another life. No! He's the imposter. Mr. Spock, you know who I am. You know what that is. Mr. Spock, which one? What do we do? We'll let the captain handle this. I'm the captain. Isn't that obvious? Look at his face. He wants you to think that he's Captain Kirk. I'm Captain Kirk! Captain, I've lost command. I've lost the Enterprise. How many lives do you see there? Um, yes. <laughs> you cannot hurt me! I will turn this on and leave you in agony all night. Are you afraid or aren't you? I will not allow you to lecture me. So what are we waiting for? Your enthusiasm is premature. That wasn't the audience we were shooting for. We wanted to make sure this was an audience, you know, uh, a movie for an audience that was, you know, a, a, a movie-going audience, not a Trek movie-going audience. Yeah. Well, I was never a Star Trek fan, so when I, you know, was developing it as a producer, I was trying to help make it something that would appeal to me. Your intuition was correct. Unfortunately. Yeah. I never in a million years thought I would direct a Star Trek. Jane waited to Vag. Yes, Captain. My suspicions have been confirmed. Let's hope it goes as well with the Romulan. Welcome to the Delta Quadrant. Our Romulan visitor is a person out of time. He's showing clear evidence of temporal displacement. You're about to cause a terrible disaster that will cost billions of lives. We're here to stop you from doing that. <laughs> that little display doesn't convince you. I don't know what will. He's insane. 
No, he's not. Wounded, maybe. Even tortured. That's called paranoia, Chakotay, with a hint of megalomania. You don't know what he's been through. Wipe out civilizations to help his own race? I understand perfectly. It's more complicated than that. I think he wants this to end as much as anyone. I guess I don't have the instinct for time, or whatever it is Captain Nemo out there calls it. Tell me how your planet Vulcan looks on a lazy evening when the moon is full. <laughs> a full power start. Do you hear me? We've got to risk a full power start. I my father, our customs. I was ashamed of my earth. <laughs>